I want to give a thanks to Pastor Mark Eamon for his invitation to be part of uh, this special moment in the life of Fox um, a group of Baptist churches in, in Illinois. My desire was to be there uh, in life, but you know what the situation we have been living. But I'm so glad that you won't miss this opportunity to uh, be blessed not only with uh, the, 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 the Word of God, but also with the challenge that each of us, as a church planter or as a pastor, we face in our life. But before all that, I need to say, who am I? I'm, um, I was born in 1961 in a very tiny island in Dominican Republic in the Caribbean. An island of 48,000 square kilometers. Uh, and we share our island with Haiti, just to give you as a reference. But God started moving in my life at the age of eight years old. It was 1969, and God marked my life. I was uh, watching in the black TV the landing of the Apollo 11. Three guys, Armstrong, Colin, and Aldrin, and I was in Dominican Republic in that time. I saw those guys walking on the moon. For me, that day was a special moment. Because I, in my mind, at the little age of eight years old, I was thinking how difficult could be for a man to leave planet Earth and land on the moon. But that day, I learned a lot of principles. I knew that God had incredible, talented men around the Earth that can achieve many things. But uh, 10 years later, God marked my life again. But now, I had 18 years old, 10 years later, 1979. And when I was alone in a beach of Dominican Republic, we are an island, so we got a lot of beaches. And I was sitting alone in a beach. My brother, who just recently received Christ, he put me a black Bible and he wrote me a letter. And in that letter, he pointed me to several Bible verses to try to bring me close to God. And that day, God speared my heart alone with a sea in front and sand, sand behind me. And I couldn't understand that day the gospel. When I returned back home, I asked him, when is the next meeting of the church? And he said, this Thursday. There's a special group that is coming from Liberty University. They will be singing in Spanish because our country is a Spanish-speaking country. And that's my first language, by the way. If you feel something in my accent, it's because English is my second language. Uh, forgive me for that. But that day, that Thursday, when I went to see this group, Again, God used some words that transformed my life. When the guys were singing, they were singing one song based on the C.T.S. Todd poem, Only One Life. And in my heart, I understand at the age of 18 that I need a Savior. But not only that, that I only have one opportunity in life to serve the King. And in my journey, that has been 41 years ago of that decision when I surrendered my life to Christ. I learned some principles that I wanted to share to you in just 30 minutes of trying to do as best as I can. So when you stand up out of, out of your, your, your seat or if you are in home, I don't know what the plans are to do with this video, but whatever it is, I just want that you understand some principle, no methods. Because methods can change. Churches in Illinois are different from South Florida, where I'm located. But the principles are the same. And the first principle I learned in my journey of faith is this. God is sovereign. God is sovereign. Are you agree with me? Amen? God is sovereign. But God goes where faith moves him. Again, 
God move where faith move him. That brings me back to one special moment in my starting journey of faith. <clears throat> as soon as I received Christ at the age of 18, at the age of 20, two years later, I was still basically a teenager, young guy. My brother, who was two years older than me, he said that he got a calling to be a church planter. And uh, I asked him, excellent, who will be the core group? And uh, he answered me, you and me. Wow. Boom. You and me? That's a difficult task. It is. But he trusts God and I trust God. So we start and we knock the first door. Somebody answered, the lady answered with her daughter and both received Christ. So we experienced an incredible growing of 100% from two to four people. But in that journey, as we started the church in that time, I remember one moment where we only have two ties. I, re I don't remember the color, but let's imagine that it's a blue color and a red color. You know, very famous these days. Uh, and I was wearing the tie the, with a white shirt, with a blue tie, and he wearing the red tie. And uh, what we do next week, because we only have two, we switch it. Now he wore the red one and I wear the blue one. So every week we switch the tie until one day he told me, Martin, why we don't pray to God for ties? Imagine this. I'm 18 years old. He's 20. And I'm thinking how difficult it is our situation that we cannot buy more than two ties. But now I found more difficult to ask God and to bother God with our needs. But we trust him. We trust God. That principle, God needs to see our faith. And even he's sovereign and he's in control. He allowed that we use our faith to intervene and ask him, God, we need more ties. One week later, my aunt, that she was married with my uncle, who is a doctor who used to have a lot of ties and was not using, no longer more. She came with a box with almost 48 different ties for me and my brother. And that day, I understand, at the very early stage of my faith and walk with Jesus, that God moved. With the faith of men. So that marked my life. That was early stage in my life and ministry. But I learned that God is a multiplier. God is a multiplier. That's in the Genesis to the end of the Bible. God is a God who multiplies. And then in 1989, 10 years later, the Lord moved me again and marked me again. Now, not to give my life to Christ that I did in 1979, but to take me out of my comfort zone, take me out of my island where I speak Spanish, where I have family and friends, where I have a beautiful church where I was serving and serving my king, where I was happy. And the Lord suddenly moved events of my life and he brought me where I live now in Broward County, Florida, for the last 31 years. 1989, God marked my life. And in that process, when I couldn't understand how difficult it would be for me, I continue learning that God moved in the difficulties of life. Right now, we're facing a pandemic that is very difficult. Churches are facing a lot of situations, but trust God and believe that he has a plan. So you all learn that as a principle of life. And the, the thing that we, during that process of multiplication, uh, I think that in the book of Acts, chapter 15, we see that the apostle Paul and his team 
In that, in that time, Barnabas and John Mark, they started the first missionary trip that they have been sent by the church of Antioch, a beautiful church in the New Testament. But suddenly, John Mark find the mission very difficult, and he throw the towel and he quit. And the second time, when Paul has in his heart going back to Asia to encourage the church, he uh, Barnabas bring John Mark to Paul, and Paul said, "No way, Jose, I'm not going with that man. He quit on me." And you know the story. Then now two groups are working as a missionary team. But that showed me that Paul and Barnabas had the right passion for multiplication. The right passion. Why? Because Paul was serving in his local church. Paul was active in the church of Antioch. He was not just sitting in the pew waiting that God called him to Asia or to anywhere. God Use him wherever he was. And because he was moving and he was moving the mission forward, God selected him and Varnava for a new challenge in their life. A lot of churches I have been in during years, I not only founded this church that we call uh, Iglesia Real in Spanish. In English, we plant also real church in English. And also we have Iglesia Real in Portuguese. Uh, but not only I've been a church planter for the last 14, 15 years, but also I founded in 2006 what we name it Come Over Ministry. And it was based in this vision. God was clear to me that I will be coming over to places and help. But before we go to that verse, I learned something. There's a lot of people in our church because I'm a pastor who, who is a passionate with missions and church planting and multiplication. That's my DNA. And as a church, and as a church that I've been sending and planting through Send Network and NAM, we have been actively involved in that. But uh, one thing, the one rule I have is when people want to go with me to any countries that we have been working, now through Come Over, we have been working in planting churches and equipping leaders and raising disciples. In 35 countries, 35 countries in 14 years. But one of the rules is, if you are not serving, moving uh, the mission forward locally, then you cannot come to the mission field. That's normal, huh? That's, that's, that's fair, no? In some way, to say if you are not doing locally, you cannot do it globally. So you need, honestly, the right passion. And Paul has it. Paul was on fire. So God called Paul because he was actively serving at the church of Antioch. And what was Paul doing in, in Antioch, in the church? He was doing the, what we call it the 3F. He was fishing, evangelism. He was feeding the sheep. That's, that's discipleship. And he was doing fellowship, family. Fish, feed, and family. And that's what I share with my church all the time. Well, no, my church, the Jesus Christ Church, that I'm a pastor. We need to have the right passion, the right passion. Same as Paul has it. Um, 40 years walking with Jesus, 41, exactly. I've seen this journey that only the passionate people with the right passion for God have been used in an incredible way. But now we go to the second point, the third. The first, go move with the faith, move him. Second, you need to have the right passion. But second, third, you need to have the right team for multiplication, the right team. I mentioned again in the book of Acts, chapter 15, when Paul said, okay, John Mark is not going with me, immediately, Barnabas said, okay, I go with him to Cyprus again. And then Paul formed another team. And in that team was Silas. And Silas was a Roman citizen. And now, th this is very important. Hey, guys, if you want to plant churches, if you want to be part of the multiplication in the United States, and that's, that's incredible that in God's heart is the multiplication. In God's heart 
It's the making disciple process. And we get it wrong. We think, okay, I'm going to Chicago to plant a church. No, you don't go to Chicago to plant a church. You're going to Chicago to make disciples. As you make disciples, you raise leaders. As you raise leaders, then you plant churches. We got it wrong. We got it wrong. Many of us think that, okay, I got, let me see how many churches I will plant this year. No, you got to be actively making disciples. And I want to two books that have been impacting my life. One of them is The God Who Sends by Francis Dubois. I think he wrote it in 1983. It's one of those classic books that you don't even find in the store no longer. But in that book, Francis, what he was doing was this. He was showing from Genesis to Revelation that God all over the scriptures is a God who has been sending. Isaiah, who I shall send, Send me. I will send you as the Father sent me. So all the time. And then Jesus sent the seventies. All the time you see in action the sending. Not coming to church. Go out the world. Go and make disciples. That's the command. That's the challenge. That's the multiplication process. So that book made me to understand that God, my God, is a God that please, that he feels happy when we go out and we have been sent. The second book is another classic book written by Dr. Robert Coleman and is the plan for evangelism and discipleship. Another classic one. And in that book, I learned very clearly what is the right team Jesus started his ministry selecting and choosing disciples. And for those ones, then he developed, dedicated to them, influenced them. And then at the end, the eighth steps, if you read the book, you see the, the, um, the process of multiplication and reproduction. A lot of churches reproduce, maybe in another church. But no many churches multiply. So what is the difference with reproduction and multiplication? It's easy. It's simple. I was talking to um, the Harry Lewis, vice president of uh, St. Network, North American Mission Board. And he called me and in the conversation he was sharing with me some data that I couldn't believe it. He said that we have in the Southern Baptist a convention, now probably the, the Great Commission Baptist. Beautiful name if we choose that one. Um, he shared with me that from the 46, 47,000 churches, get ready, only 38 are multiplier churches. 38 from 47,000? What's wrong? I think we're having the right passion and we are not getting the right team. So in my prayer is that our church that have been doing it, I'm one of those churches. By the way, two of our churches are multiplier because our church, Iglesia Real, give birth to real church and real church give birth to two churches. So, and the process continue. And we only have seven years as Iglesia Real. Seven years. And so far, we have been planting or sending or being part of a born of a church, 12 churches, 10 in the United States, and one in Ecuador, and one in the Iquitos, of Peru, in the jungle of, and the Amazon jungle of Peru. So 12 churches in seven years. And it's difficult? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Because when you take people from your church, when you get at soul level, we are, when we get to 10%, uh, 300, we take 10% and we have been sending them out. And we send leaders and kids and researchers. That's difficult. But that's God's plan. It's not just an, an exclusive place of worship. It's an inclusive for the kingdom. But we have a lot of heart for the nomination. One of the greatest denominations that we are part of. 
We got a great heart for our name as a church, for our ministry. But what about the kingdom of God? How is your heart? I think this moment that you are having is a great moment to reflect about that. Four principles, and I'm getting close almost to the end. You not only need the right team, because now Paul had the right team. Because in that moment, sometimes, guys, there's people that you have to let it go. Because you will not advance in the kingdom with those obstacles. But it's part of what God does. So um, we also need an incredible right moment or right place for multiplication. Not only the right team, not only the right passion, not only to know that God is sovereign, but he moves with our faith. And in difficult time, when you think that you don't have no way and no more than two ties, God show you that he's in control. God show it that his providence and his provision is faithful. But why? Why the right place? Why you need to be in the right place? In my church planting journey, and like I told you, we have been working in countries, planting churches, equipping leaders, raising leaders, raising disciples. Just in Cuba, in the last six years, in Cuba, we make a, a, a prayer request and a plan in Pinal del Rio to plan in, by the end of 2020, we call it Vision 2020, to plan 120 churches. And that was in 2015. Okay, by 2020, we have been planting 120 churches. You know how many we got? Last couple of weeks, I got the report, 121. <laughs> God is faithful. God is in control. And we were in the right place. And in Venezuela, I can tell you, in India, in Nepal, in Spain, and other countries that God has been used uh, through difficult times, people such incredible that have been trusting God, that have been with the right thing, having with the right passion, and they have been in the right place. Sometimes we have challenge as a pastor and as a church planter, thinking, okay, maybe God is not using me because I only got 40 people in our church for many years. Maybe if I move to another church, another place, another city, I will have a bigger ministry or I will impact or be used by God more in the kingdom. Don't listen to that voice. You just need to be in the right place that God put you in. Trust me. For me, I, it took me a long time to understand why God moved me from my zone, from my country, to bring me back to a country that I don't know the language, I didn't have any documents, I didn't have any resources, I didn't know anybody, and God put me in this city, the city of Hollywood, in such a time as this. For the last 31 years living in this county, I love South Florida, I love Miami, I love uh, West Palm Beach and Broward County, my county had 31 cities, and I love and pray for each one of those cities that one day our ministry, that are spread all over Broward County now, can one day, one day have churches in the north, in the south, in the center, in the east, and in the west of our county. But I remember I was a, I've been an entrepreneur all my life since I'm nine years old. I, I got that ability, that, that ability given by God. I didn't create myself an entrepreneur. God made me like this. So I always was in business, and, and I got business in Dominican Republic. And then when I came over here, I started working in a Tony Romas, probably in Chicago. They have one. I don't know. South Florida, almost all the Tony Romas has been now going to the international field, more than the global, the local uh, uh, cities in the United States. And I remember one of my other biggest experiences, if I will have two hours, <laughs> I will have the long time to explain my life, what God has been doing in all this year, but I only got 35 minutes. So I got to be wise how I use it. But this is, story is important. Because I remember that when I was uh, in Tony Romas, I finished owning the restaurant, 
Honestly. I started cleaning it, and I finished in 10 years, no, eight years working with Tony Romas. I finished owning. I was the owner with another partner. And I was growing. Imagine. I came 10 years before, and that was in 1999. 10 years later, from 1989 when I came. 10 years later, and I achieved the American dream, owning the restaurant. A restaurant that you need a cash flow of $3 million just to have a franchise. <laughs> God, God did it. And I, I was the owner. I started growing and managing the restaurant. I love it, what I was doing. I was 42 years old, and then at the age of 42, the Lord told me, leave the restaurant, put in the altar, and come over and serve for me. Plant a church. Boom. Do you think that was a difficult decision? For sure it was. Let me tell you why. One of the mega, biggest reasons. In that time, I was making, that's, that was in 19... 99. In 2004 was when God called me, four or five years later, when I was growing, achieving the American dream of any Latino person or people who come and use and come to this country and get uh, part of this, this country as their own. And uh, in that moment, I was making around $90,000 a year. <laughs> I left the restaurant business to my partners. And then I didn't receive a penny. And then, listen to this, I started church with around 18 people. How much was the budget, the first budget? $48,000 a year. How much the pastor, Martin, the new church planter will make? $19,000 a year. Now, I don't recommend this. <laughs> Why? This is crazy. To go for $90,000 a year to nineteen. dollars but I was sure that I was doing the right thing for the kingdom. And I was in the right place where God put me in. But I need some help. I was no part of any Southern Baptist or any association that helped me financially or any church that would be my mother church. I was alone with only God. That's difficult. That's doing ministry in difficult time. But God did it. So Ben, I, I was start moving and I, my brother, the first one that started the story with me, who planted the first church, he told me, Martin, because he was being in the United States now, and he told me, I got a guy in Orlando area. His name is Al Wise. Look at the photo. Look at the photo of Al Wise. And Al Wise was the president of the Walt Disney World. And he is an incredible Christian. In that time, he was very active in his church in Orlando, or in Kissimmee. I don't remember very well. I think it was Kissimmee, the, the, the city. And he interviewed me because my brother wanted to, to raise support for me, like we do when we have a new church. But then suddenly he asked me and he proposed me this. Listen this. He proposed me, Martin, how much is that you making? And I told him, okay, I see a lot of potential in you. I, I didn't have more than 18 people. And he said, I see a lot of potential in church planting in you. Why you don't move to Orlando area and I support you for five years until you grew up a good group that could be financially independent. I will pay you around $85,000 for the five years and you don't need to raise support for nobody. <laughs> but you got to move to Orlando. And I watch him, and then I pray to the Lord. And I say, Mr. Wise, I really appreciate you, your words and your offer, but sorry, my right place is in Hollywood. If you cannot help me or support uh, what we're doing in Broward County, then, thank you very much. I got to let it pass. And I did. I did it. But I was in the right place. To conclude this moment with you guys, and I hope that some planters that are thinking about 
how difficult it is to start a ministry during COVID-19 or how difficult it is for many pastors. Trust me, I have been financial issues, health issues, language issues, team issues, and all of those has been not enough to stop God's kingdom to move the mission forward. The last thing that I want to, to share with you is that not only you need uh, to know that God is sovereign, but he moved with faith, move him, and he can be a multiplier in your life and ministry, that you need to be with the right passion for God, that you need the right team, and you need to be in the right place for last. You need to do it in the right time for multiplication. The right time. Remember that as you multiply your life and ministry, a journey that for me has been 41 years, God has allowed me, like in the book of Esther, chapter 4, verse 14, when Mordecai, Mordecai was in front of Esther, and he told you, listen, Esther, God wants to use you. And you can do it, or you can have a lot of excuses why do not do it. But let me tell you, you will perish, you and your family. But who knows if God has you in the kingdom for such a time as this. And I think, brothers, probably some sisters too, that God have you in the city of whatever you are, in Illinois or maybe other states around, God want to use you. God want to use you to be a multiplier. What if instead of just 38 churches that are multiplying in the United States, Canada and Puerto Rico, we raise that number to 100, to 200, to 1,000, from those 47,000 churches. What if, what if we start trusting God, really, real, like the name of our church, that is real, genuinely. So I think, honestly, that when I remember that day where I surrendered my life to Christ, looking at the CT start only one life, he said this in that poem, only one life will soon be past. Only what's done for Christ will last. When I arrived to the city of Hollywood, only 6% were Latinos. 6% in 1989. Today, my city got 42% of a Spanish-speaking family. And I'm not adding the 30% of Russians. I'm not adding the Brazilian, the Portuguese. I'm not adding the Haitian. Our South Florida is very mixed, like Chicago, like other cities in Illinois. Maybe a lot of them are just waiting that you be the instrument to be the multiplier churches. It will be difficulties Yes. It will be, oh, we need this, we need that. I think that's the main problem. All the time we're like this. What can I get instead? What can I give away? We are a family here. We are a sent network. And we help each other. And we work together just with one cause. The Jesus Christ kingdom and the expansion of his ministry. So I will be praying now that whatever from all this word, I hope that you understand it. I try to do my best in English, but my heart and my th thoughts are in Spanish. So I got to translate it immediately in my mind. But I hope that a, a few words stick to your heart. And when you send me a note, or maybe through Mark, you can say, you know what? I want to trust God. I want to have the right team. I want to have the right passion. 
I want to have the right place. And I want to have the right time. What if Martin Vargas will be thinking the day I was without wives? Well, you know, I'm just three hours away from Orlando and I can make and give some safety to my family financially. It's not the same making 19,000 that to make 85,000. I could have all the excuse of the world. But you know what I will miss? I will be missing that in the last 14, 15 years, God has allowed our church to multiply and be influenced. I'm church planter and father, mother and grandmother of around 12 churches like I mentioned and around the world in 35 countries. My dream that when I pass away, I told my family, my son is a pastor, he's a church planter as well, incredible, talented. Uh, I tell them, listen, I would love to have one flag of every country that I was part of the multiplication process. My dream, to have 40 flags. So far, we got 35. So I don't know how long and how many years we got left, but on the day of my funeral, I just want to let you know that my heart is for the kingdom. God bless you, and let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I don't know anybody, not even Mark Eman, I don't know him. But you coordinated this moment in such a time as this. So I could be able maybe not to travel and be in person, knowing and hugging and, 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 and introducing to other pastors and church planters and potential church planters. But you allow that still I could send this message via virtually. And I hope, and it's my prayer, that maybe you have one or two or three pastors, or maybe all of them, could be impacted with some way that you can use it in 2020, 21, better than ever. I ask this in Jesus Christ's name. God bless you. I send a hello from the most beautiful state, the Sunshine State, Florida. Bye-bye.